Greetings and welcome to the Hills of Steel 2 Tank Breakdown series. I'm your host Andrew and we're back to introduce a new tank to the series. Today we're going to be taking a look at Buck. This shotgun blasting tank is going to prove a lot of fun for players. As you can see Buck comes with a handful of different skins that you can unlock. Looking at the statistics, Buck has a relatively decent amount of health due to the fact that he needs to be on the front line a lot of the times. The speed is relatively good and the special is very strong. The attack is quite low but you'll see why that is when we get into the game. As for attachments, it has all the usual. For today's one we're actually going to be building it a little different. Before we would actually do a little bit of building towards health and survivability. But for today's episode we're actually going to be going all in on damage. So, we're going to be using the fuzzy dice, the heavy barrel, and then we're going to be looking at the reload speed. Of course, you can play this any way you want, so if you need to have more health or more regen, you can play it that way as well. It's all about what fits your playstyle. Now that we've got that set up, let's jump into some action and see how Buck actually works in games. First up, we're going to take a look at Buck in some team survival. So the first thing to note when we get into the game, although we're using the heavy barrel and that gives us a 10% reduced movement speed, Buck still moves pretty quickly still. The reason why the shot damage is so low is because when we fire off a shot with Buck, you can see that it does a forward spread. Each individual shot does the initial damage. So it's not 80 damage, it's actually 80 per bullet. And of course, as you level and put the multipliers in from the boosters, that increases with each particular shot. So, as you can see on the screen, we're actually doing 96 per shot that actually hits on each tank. That paired off with the fact that we have 5 shots in total means that we can do a lot of damage when we get up close and personal. As for our special ability, we have a mine. Basically, what this does is that it'll place a little mine on the ground that has a sensor. Whenever an enemy tank rolls over this, it will detonate and do a large amount of damage. This gives Buck a unique playstyle that helps him be very defensive. You, of course, as a shotgun wielding tank, will want to get up close to the tanks to do the most amount of damage that you can. However, you can use mines to lay them behind you, so that when enemies are pushing into you, whether it's in waves, or if it's in like a bunker bash or something that you need to protect, it means that even if you go down, your mines are still there to do a lot of damage. Also, you don't have to place just one mine. When you place a mine, it will stay there. You'll notice that on screen, the one that we placed from before is still there, even though we push forward and actually place another mine. So, as long as you're doing a lot of damage and building up your special, you can place multiple mines. This is great for being able to not only attack, but to defend certain objectives. Also, when there's a lot of action going on on the screen, it can be very difficult to see the mines, and enemies might not notice them and walk straight into them. There are a number of things about Buck to take into consideration. The range of the shot is really good, but because we have an okay amount of health, it means that we need to be careful about when we take damage. In some cases, like the Phoenix, we don't want to get too close as we will take a lot of damage and against other things like Joker, we will take damage from the range. So there's a sort of middle ground where we need to play Buck in. The spread of the shot, obviously, when you're close to the tank, will hit them face on. Whereas if you're a little further back, it spreads out and maybe not all the bullets are going to hit them. So take that into consideration. With a buck as well, if you do build it more towards the survivability, you can be a good frontliner for your team as well. So if you have teams like we have right now with the Titan, we can push forward to actually take most of the hits from the enemy team and make them focus on us so that our enemies teams will take damage from our friendlies from behind. This makes it safe for them, but it also means that should we die, 
We're still not leaving them exposed as we have our mines down in the ground as well. As suggested by the name Buck, when we do fire off a shot you'll notice that there is a bit of recoil, much like a shotgun would have. However, this does not affect the shot itself, so you shouldn't have too much of a problem about how to aim. And of course, we all know that in the team survival mode, Wave 7 is one of the most difficult ones to deal with. The bucks are just so strong. But now that we've seen the basics, let's now see how it works against actual players. So, let's jump over to some bunker bash and see how that looks. Bunker Bash is a great game mode to play Buck in, for a number of reasons. One, you want to do as much damage as you can to the enemies. One thing we didn't mention before is that when enemies stack up together like they have here, the Buck shots are going to do a lot of damage to all of them, so it's great for taking down a lot of enemies at once. Of course, since our objective is to protect our bunker, the mines are very important here as well. It means that as we stated earlier, should we die, we still have a line of defense ready. Hiding mines on the hills like this means that it forces the enemy into coming over the top to take damage whether they like it or not, because they have to get to the objective. So this makes Buck a very strong tank to have in your team composition. Because of the range of the shot as well, it means that we can do damage from afar to try and take the bunker down. And, as we've stated, because you can pit down multiple mines at once, it makes it a very, very difficult terrain for the enemies to try and get over. The only thing you need to be careful of is that as soon as you get your mines ready, you get them down, because in this game mode, like you will in Rampage, will probably die quite a bit, even if you have boosters and tank parts that will help you survive more. Once we get close to some of the enemy tanks, we're able to burn them down very quickly. And of course, because the buckshot is a widespread lot of damage, it means we can take bunkers down very quickly. In one-on-one -on -one situations, it'll depend on who you're going up against. As we mentioned before, there's this little window for buck where shots will go over and when shots up close will be dangerous. When we push into the Joker here, we take a lot of damage, but because of the style of our tank means that we do a lot more damage in return so we can take the first victory. Dodging some of the bullets, we're able to get forward, and what we do is we get over the hill real quickly and just place a trap, as well as getting a couple of shots off quickly. This then means that once the mine detonates, we get an instant win. Now it comes down to doing the same again. Basically, with the buck, it can hold its own in one-on-one -on -one depending on who you're going up against. The idea is just to get close, do as much damage as you can, and ensure that you get your mines down, that it forces them into it. This concludes our tank breakdown for Buck. Don't forget to like and subscribe to keep up to date with all the content that's ongoing. Follow our social medias, and join our Discord where you can interact with other players, share your fan art, and participate in giveaways. If you play Buck and have any hints or tips on how best to play them, let us know in the comments below. Until the next time, have fun, and we will see you on the hills.